The American Egyptian Women of Influence podcast aims to be the American Egyptian culture podcast of choice. We believe that our knowledge and our participants' stories will greatly enhance understanding of both cultures. I'm Karen Leggett Abouraya. Michelle Alexander grew up in Alexandria, Egypt, where she studied nursing at the Italian hospital, only to have the government change the rules at the last moment and require exams in Arabic, not Italian. Michelle actually speaks or reads six languages, but not medical vocabulary in all of them. Eventually, she came to the United States and earned her PhD in epidemiology and medical sociology at the State University of New York in Buffalo. Later, she would work in this field at the National Institutes of Health in Maryland, where she now lives in very active retirement. Welcome, Michelle. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Michelle, the focus of your research and your work at NIH was asthma, including helping to write the guidelines for the diagnosis and management of asthma. We certainly take asthma very seriously now, but, but you learned that it really wasn't always the case. That is correct. That is correct. Um, when I did my dissertation, I, I chose asthma and I ch chose a comparison with um, diabetes because at the time diabetes was considered a real disease and asthma was considered a psychosomatic disease. And what was gratifying to you about working on the, the guidebook for, for asthma? Uh, the fact that uh, it did change, that the it was several years after my, my dissertation, of course, I had my doctorate and I worked at the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute on the second version of the asthma guidelines, because they had several versions. And uh, it was very gratifying to see how seriously it was being considered. Now, while you were in Buffalo, you were also clinical coordinator after the Love Canal disaster in the 1970s. Now, Love Canal was a neighborhood in Niagara Falls, New York, where a landfill became the site of an enormous chemical, toxic chemical disaster. What was your role there? Um, we were going to do a complete study of the effects of the toxic levels of uh, of all the chemicals in the Love Canal. And so was, there were some 38 or 48 studies because the toxic chemicals were affecting every single part of the body and mind and cancer. And um, give, uh, women were having uh, mis uh, miscarriages. And so there were a lot, a lot of effects that needed to be looked into. And so we were getting funding from NIH to do all those studies. You were coordinating all those studies. Correct. Now, Correct. Were you able to finish them and see some, are there any positive no. results from no, the funding, no, the funding was stopped after, oh, a little over a year, year and a half that we were setting it up. So you didn't get very far. No, no, there were all, for each and every toxic effect, we needed to have a proposal, an application, oh. to explain how the study was going to study this particular effect. Was that ever so taken it, up again? Was it ever taken up again? No, no. So that's just part of the so, sad story of Love, Love Canal. Not, not only that, but right now it's been bulldozed over and they built new houses on, on that piece of land and young people who knew nothing about the Love Canal started moving in and they're beginning to find health effects again so we're in the, in that the story. area. Yes, it's, it's very sad. That's discouraging. But your, your work has not always been medical. While you were living in Brussels because of your husband's work, you also participated in the first International Tribunal on Crimes Against Women. Now, that tribunal was intended to make public the full range of crimes against women in all countries. Do you think it made a difference? I think so. I think so, because after that, uh, well, there was uh, a book written. I don't know if you can see the book here. And uh, there were um, articles in, in, every, um, in a lot of journals. There were women's studies in many universities that had started uh, 
being implemented, which did not exist before. So there was a, a lot that happened after that. It was very gratifying. So it was good to be at the beginning of that, of that work. Yes, that was wonderful, yeah. And the, the women who came from all over the world, from like 40 countries, 2,000 women, for the first time on their own, spontaneously just giving testimony, it was, it was very moving. And in retirement, you haven't reduced your level of activity much at all. Uh, in, in one case, you're working to find a home for a very special dress your mother wore. Tell me a little bit about that dress. Um, my mother was the very first Miss Egypt in 1935 or 36, and then she became the very first Miss, well, we think it was the first Miss Universe um, in Brussels, Belgium, representing Egypt. And at the time, they wore their national costume for the Miss Universe. There was no bathing suit at the time, not at all. It was the national costume and then an evening gown for the next night. So that's the dress she wore when she won the prize for Miss Universe. And you still have that in beautiful condition. I sure do. Also working with an Afghan family who was settled in the Washington area. Tell me a little bit about that work. I am about three years ago. Um, Montgomery County started a uh, a program with different um, other religious organizations within the county to help uh, refugees. In the case of my family, they are um, asylum seekers because he worked for an American company and was actually threatened by the Taliban. So it's a father, mother, and three little boys, and it's an absolutely wonderful family. It's been three years. I've been working with them, but it's more than working because they adopted me and I adopted them. <laughs> so it's, what, it's, are, what sort of things are you doing with them? Uh, I'm mainly teaching the mom English. But then I helped them with everything else. And the, the mom had dental issues, so it was finding dental care, uh, free dental care if possible, whenever possible. She needed a lot of work. And then finding, you know, registering the children for summer camp and different classes, basketball after school and um, finding... Um, uh, at the very beginning, trying to help the father find different job, writing job description for himself. Um, everything uh, about living in, in the United States. Yes, everything. it's incredible. It's, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for all the work you're doing with the family and, and, and all you've given throughout your life. We thank you very much and I'm well, delighted to have this conversation, Michelle. I gained a lot. Thank you. Thank you.